What's up, fam? Um, it's me. I'm back. Um, and I just wanted to bring y'all a quick update. I know it's it's it's, it's late because it's actually 3:47 a.m. here on the East Coast in in North Carolina. Um, but I just wanted to bring y'all a quick update on the uh, the story of the uh, of the story of the Rochester police that uh, pepper sprayed that little nine year old black girl. I just wanted to bring you the update on that. So I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope everybody's being smart. And I hope everybody's trying to get on code. And getting on code simply means that you set aside all the differences. You set aside all the uh, uh, internal conflicts amongst each other, amongst your group. And you band together. You circle your wagons to protect uh, one of your group when anything comes up. When anything pops up. Uh, just like the white supremacists do, just like the, uh, the uh, other white folks do in the dominant society, because everybody white is not white supremacists. Um, just like the Asians do, just like the Jews do, just like the Hispanics do, just like all these other groups do. You know, yes, they have internal conflicts. Yes, they have uh, internal problems, just like any other group. But they know how to put those things aside and get on one accord. They get to thinking the same thing. They get to talking the same thing. They get to moving in the same direction. That's what being on code means. Being on code means even when you see one of your own that's steering everybody wrong and steering everybody in the right direction. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you need to call them out publicly. And the reason why you need to call them out publicly is because that public calling out will let them know that you mean business you understand what i'm saying and that you're not going to allow them to continue that destructive behavior that behavior that is uh, uh detrimental and destructive to the group as a collective as a whole see that's what getting on code is all about getting on code is about protecting the group as a collective it's about that communal spirit that spirit of community not that individualism so that's what being on code means. It's not that hard. Being on code means that you simply will not do or will not say anything that is detrimental to your group as a whole. It may benefit you as one person. You understand what I'm saying? But but then you, you look at the situation and you say, okay, well, yeah, this might benefit me a little bit as one individual person, but how is it going to affect my entire community, my entire group as a whole? So, see, that's what being on code is all about. And being on code is not that you just accept anything that, that somebody is saying or doing just because they're black. No, if what they're saying, if what they're doing is detrimental or is harmful to the group as a whole, then you have to call that out and you have to let them know. No, 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 no. We can't, we, we can't, we can't be doing stuff like that. We, we can't be handling situations like that. We can't be speaking like that publicly. Because that's harmful to the community as a whole. So, see, that's the reason why, we, you know, for years we have given people passes and we have forgiven people and we have allowed for people to just keep on doing crazy stuff and just keep on doing stuff that's, that, that's making the whole group look bad or that's harmful to the whole group. We have allowed them to keep going on and giving them passes simply because they were black. And we've got to stop doing that. Because other groups don't do that. Other groups will completely cut you off, will completely ostracize you will completely exile you if you continue to do things that's detrimental and harmful to them as a collective. Sometimes they'll do more than that. Sometimes they'll take you completely out. So that's the reason why, yes, it's very important when somebody black continues on and on and on and on and on, over and over and over and over and over again to do something that's harmful to the group as a whole. Even after they've been talked to, even after they've been warned, even after, after they've been called out, maybe, in, uh, uh, you know, in a kind of light way. And they keep on, yeah, you got to call them out. You got to call them out public and you got to be strong about it. You got to be real about it. You got to be firm about it. Can't be no, you know, kumbaya and kissing and and, and, and all, baby, you know, you just can't be doing. No, 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 no. 
You got to put it to them and let them know. You, you can't be doing that. And if that's the way you're going to operate, and if that's the way you're going to act, and if that's the way you're going to conduct yourself, then you're going to have to conduct yourself over there, separate from the group. Because what you are doing is harmful to us as a whole. So that makes no difference whether that's your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your auntie, your pastor, your politician, your mayor, your governor, your president, your vice president, or whoever it is. If they are doing anything, saying or doing anything continuously that's harmful to the group, they've got to be called out. And every time they do something, they got to be brought in, they, they got to be checked on it. They have got to be checked. And that, that, don't, that not only goes, that not only goes for uh, black folks who do it, but that goes for anybody who does it from another group. Keep your mouth to yourself. We got to start checking these folks. And we got to remind these folks who we are. We got to remind these folks that we are mother, the, the mothers and the fathers of civilization. We've got to remind these folks that we were the first people here. That we are the original man and woman. And that every culture, every race, everybody comes from us. We got to remind these folks that not only are we native... Aborigine, not only are we native to North America, but we're native to the world. Africa explored and civilized the world, the globe. So we got to stop taking a back seat to anybody or anything. And we've got to understand who we are, understand where we come from, understand that we are the original people. And understand that by the time nature gets finished, ain't nobody going to be here but the original people. But everybody else comes from us. And all of these immigrants and all of these folks that are over here, whether they be from the Caribbean, from Africa, from China, from, from, from Asia, uh, 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 from South America, Central America, wherever they, Europe, wherever they come from. All of these folks have got to understand that there would be no America for them to be in if it, was not, if it weren't for us. We built it from the ground up. We are the foundation. We are the foundation of America. We are the culture of America. We are the face of America. We are America. We are the original American. We are the only real Americans. And not all of us came here on a slave ship. Most of us were already here. So we got to call these folks out. You understand what I'm saying? And we got to put these, we got to check these folks. Whether we checking them in person, whether we checking them online, whether we checking them on social media, or however. We got to check these folks and remind these folks, uh-uh, you're no longer dealing with a people that don't know who they are. You're no longer dealing with a people that don't know their history because their history was hidden from them. It's not because it didn't exist and it's not because it was hidden from anybody else. It was because it was hidden from us. But it is no longer hidden. It's no longer hidden. You're no longer dealing with that folk. You're no longer dealing with people that think that their existence started with slavery. I mean, but we were great enough doing slavery. Come on now. We started the Industrial Revolution. And all of this about the Chinese built the railroads and all that. Yeah, they did the ones uh, 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 in the north. We took care of the ones in the south and the east. The slaves did that. And the Chinese were actually paid for the work that they did. We've never been paid for anything that we did. Especially not doing slavery or sharecropping. All this about Hispanics and all this kind of stuff built this country and they're native to this country. No, they're not. By the time the Hispanics came here, they got paid too for what they did. Now, they, they might have got low wages, but they got paid. 
So you got to let these folks know that they are no longer dealing with the people that do not know where they come from. That do not realize that we do have a history. We do have a past. And it's a great, brilliant, magnificent past. It's a past that everybody else wants to try to claim and act like belong to them. See, all of that is a part of being on code. Just like you got all of these white supremacists walking around talking about the Confederate statutes and the Confederate flag and all of that. It's part of their history and it's part of their culture and it was part of their way of life and all of that. And they so proud of it to the point where they'll argue and raise hell with you and, 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 and try to write all kind of executive orders and all of this kind of stuff to keep you from removing that stuff. See, we got to have just that type of pride in our history. And in the fact that none of this would exist. None of it. Period. Not just here in, in North America. It, it, but, but period. Across this world. None of this would exist. If it wasn't for us. Because the white supremacists. The dominant society didn't know how to do nothing. And a lot of them still don't. So all the, all the immigrants that want to come over here and talk junk to the foundation of black Americans, call us all kind of names, call us all out of our names, talk about we lazy, talking about how all these other groups come over here and they achieve so much more than we do. First of all, cut the bullshit. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for us. First of all, because there would be nowhere for you to be. If it wasn't for us, your own homeland wouldn't exist. So this certainly wouldn't exist if it wasn't for us. So it's time for everybody to start giving us our props. Point blank period. Instead of trying to take our props away from us, trying to take our history away from us, trying to take our achievements and our accomplishments away from us, and, 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 and everybody else trying to latch on like there was something that they did. No, ain't nobody done nothing. You can't build a house without a foundation. But we laid the foundation and the first 10 or 15 stories. The only thing anybody else might have done was they might have added a story or two and maybe the penthouse. But we already had the building well erected by the time any of the rest of these folks showed up. So see, that's what being on code means. Now. Since I didn't got that little rant out the way, let me go ahead on and get to what I uh, what I brought you here for in the first place. And it's two things I want to talk about. The first thing I want to talk about is the update as far as um, uh, 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 the Rochester police and that little nine year old black girl that 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 they assaulted because that was assault. You understand what I'm saying? And they all need to be charged with assault. Okay. But anyway, this is coming from Spectrum News. Uh, Public Safely by Brian Campbell. And it was updated uh, yesterday at 10.46 p.m. And it says, One uh, 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 Rochester Police Department officer suspended. Two placed on leave after nine-year-old girl pepper spray. Now, of course, we tired of that. We tired of folks just getting suspension and leave, and most of the time it's, pay, it's leave with pay and all of that kind of stuff, and some of them getting fired and all of that. We sick of that. We sick of seeing that because that's not uh, that's not first of all that's not punishment, and second of all, uh, uh, of all that's not holding anybody accountable for anything. You understand what I'm saying? Holding you accountable is charging you when you commit a crime. And then proceeding to go through the whole process of you going to court, you being tried, you being convicted, and you going to do some time. See, we're talking about punishment. See, that's the reason why these race soldiers are doing what they're doing and why they continue to do it. And why with all this bullshit talking that everybody's doing, nothing is changing. Is because they know at the end of the day, the only thing that it's going to lead to is maybe a suspension. You understand what I'm saying? Maybe a little leave of absence with pay. If I get fired, okay, well, I stay off the job for six months. And then six months later, I'll go and work at another police department somewhere else. 
See, they know the same playbook. They already know what's going to happen. They already know that they're not going to be held accountable for anything that they do. Why? Well, for one, that qualified immunity bullshit. That you notice Joe Biden has said nothing about. And getting rid of these police unions. These white supremacist, racist ass police unions. That have the money to, to back these folks. You understand what I'm saying? And have the money to pressure politicians and all of this kind of stuff. See, that's another reason why we got to get our economy up. So we can buy us a politician or two like all the rest of these folks do. Because that's all they're doing. Like Claude Anderson said, you get your economics together, you understand what I'm saying? And you can buy you a politician or two. And if you can't buy him, you can rent him long enough to get some, something, some things passed that are going to benefit you and your community. Jason Black got a good saying. They hate us because we black. But, but, but they mistreat us because we poor. They're able to get away with the things that they do to us because we're poor. And not meaning we're poor in that we don't have money because collectively we got a little taste of change, especially considering the fact that we spend one uh, close to one point six trillion dollars every year as consumers. But he means poor as in we don't have an economy. We gave all that up back in the 60s when we thought we were going to integrate. We got we gave all that up. We walked away from all of that. We walked away from all of our own businesses and our own communities. You understand what I'm saying? Our own restaurants, our own uh, 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 movie theaters, our own bus routes, our own cab companies. Oh, we walked away from all of that when we thought that we, we, we could somehow uh, 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 be equal with, with, with the dominant society and that we could, we could actually fit into their society instead of continuing to have our own. We gave all that up. But see, that's the reason why these race soldiers don't, don't, don't give a blink to what they do to black folks. And like I said, just like I read in the, in the original article when they first talked about this, how these police also was tussling around in the snow with this little nine-year-old baby. They tussling around in the snow with her like she was a full-grown man. And I'm not talking about just women. I mean, it was women officers out there, men officers, full-grown old-ass men and women tussling around with a little nine-year-old in the snow. And one of the officers actually had the nerve to say to this child, Stop, you're acting like a child. And she said, I am a child. Which again lets you know that they don't consider our children children. As far as they're concerned, our children are adults. To be treated with the same disregard that they disregard most black adults. But anyway, punishment is the key. Rochester, New York. Mayor Lovely Warren, oh my God, ordered interim police chief Cynthia Harriet Harriet Sullivan, and remember when I first talked about her earlier in, in, in the first uh, video about this, I said that I, I wasn't, I thought she was black, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, she's black. Just like I said, they keep throwing these black female mayors and these black female police chiefs and all of this in the mix. All of these women that are supposed to be in positions of power, but they have absolutely no power whatsoever. The only power that they have is that little leash that white supremacy puts them on and they can't go any further than that leash lets them go. Uh, Mayor Lovely Warren ordered interim police chief Cynthia Harriet Sullivan Monday to immediately suspend the Rochester police officers involved in the use of pepper spraying of a nine-year-old girl on Avenue B on Friday. However, according to RPD officials, one officer at this time has been suspended, while two others have been placed on administrative leave 
There it is again, pending the outcome of the internal investigation. So again, we got the police investigating the police with the police union behind the police and supporting the police 100%. Spectrum News has confirmed that the suspension is with pay. So the suspension is with pay. The administrative leave is with pay. So it's a paid vacation. So they got a paid vacation for handcuffing, no, for tussling with in the snow, handcuffing and pepper spraying a nine-year-old baby. They get a, a, a paid vacation. What happened Friday was simply horrible and was rightly and has rightly outraged all of our community, Mayor Warren said Monday. Unfortunately, here comes the bullshit. Here comes white supremacy saying, okay, you can't cross that line right there. Because if you cross that line right there, you exceeding any little power we have given you. Unfortunately, state law and union contracts prevents me from taking more immediate and serious action. I will lead the charge that these laws be changed as part of our response to the governor's executive order 203. I gotta, we gotta figure out what that executive order 203 says. And we will be asking our state legislators to join me and make numerous changes in civil service law that would allow cities to more quickly issue discipline in cases like this one. They still have not released these officers' names. Why? Because they want time to go on their social media and all that kind of stuff and scrub their social media and scrub the internet of anything that they may have said that, that could even be uh, 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 looked at as being raci racist or anything like that or any connections they might have to white supremacy or any white supremacy organizations or anything like that. See, that's the reason why they won't release these officers' names right off the bat. It's not for their safety. They ain't worried about their safety. Come on, them folks up there in the Capitol showed us just how much the dominant society really cares about police officers. In all the talk and all the stuff that you've heard, nobody has mentioned the name of the police officer that was killed. Nobody has said anything about a GoFundMe for his family. Nobody has said anything about his funeral. Nobody has said anything about how his family might be doing, whether the man was married, had any kids. or no. We don't know nothing about this man. Because they are not mentioning him. If it was a black person involved in that mess that went on up there uh, 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 January the 6th, that's all they would have talked about. Oh, he killed a police officer. Oh, a police officer has been murdered. Oh, a police officer is dead. Oh, they acted like they had they was just losing their minds. But, 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 but because it was it was all these white folks, all these white supremacist groups and organizations and all that, you ain't heard nothing about this police officer that was beat to death up there, that was murdered. You ain't heard nothing about no attempted murder charges. You ain't heard nothing about no murder charges. You ain't heard nothing about that. So please don't act like they're concerned about these police officers' safety. That's not the reason why they won't give up their names. The reason why they won't give up their names is because they know that you got Tariq Nasheeds and Jason Blacks and, 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 and Professor Black Truths and, 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 and Boris Watkins and other folks in the new black media that will take those names and run with it and dig and research and find out everything that they can about those officers. So they won't be releasing those names until they have had time to scrub the internet and make sure that there is nothing that could, that could at any kind of way be construed as being racist on any of their so You won't find any social media with any of their names once they finally release those officers' names. That ain't white supremacy protecting the officers. That's white supremacy protecting itself. And like I said, they go to bullshit. You understand what I'm saying? They go to bullshit. Unfortunately, state law and union contracts prevent me from taking any more immediate action or serious action at this time. Meaning, uh, 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 these union contracts and this so-called state law and all of that is preventing her from firing these folks or charging them with anything. That, that's her excuse. 
again, like I said, white supremacy drawing that line and saying you can't come past this line. Your power does not exceed past this line. Don't let that little mayor title fool you into believing that you got any real power. The most power you have is the power that we give you, especially when you're dealing with one of us. Now, if you was dealing with one of yours, it might be different, but you're dealing with one of us. So you better be careful how you tread. You better tread real lightly because you're dealing with one of us. You're dealing with some of our folks, not your people. So I said, I just wanted to bring you the bullshit and show you how the bullshit is already in the mix. So see, the whole system of policing in America needs to be done away with and started all over again. Because the unions are the ones with the power. The mayors and the governors and all of them folks, they ain't got no power. It's these poli police unions that really have the power. So, Cuomo's executive order Two oh three. Okay, she mentioned it. Let's see if we can find out what it is. Cuomo signed Executive Order 203 requiring each local government in New York State to adopt a policing reform plan that will maintain public safety while building mutual trust and respect between police and the communities they serve. Okay, let's see. Executive Order 203, this is coming from City of Rochester, New York. Executive Order 203, New York State Police Reform and Reinvention Collabor Co Collaborative. In response to growing social unrest occurring across the country, on June 12, 2020, Governor Andrew M. Cuomo signed Executive Order 203 requiring each local government in New York State to adopt a policing reform plan that will maintain public safety while building mutual trust and respect and respect between police and the communities they serve okay we already know that the police cannot be reformed white supremacy cannot be reformed if white supremacy could be reformed it would have happened by now it would have happened centuries ago if it could be reformed So all this about reforming the police and, 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 and reforming law enforcement and policing and all of that, that ain't going to happen. On August 17, 2020, Governor Andrew M. Cuomo provided additional guidance for the New York State Police Reform and Reinvention Collaborative, which was established by the governor's executive order. This guidance provided a framework and topics for consideration by local police departments, elected officials, and citizens as they developed their local plans for reform. Per the governor's ex ex executive order, every locality must adopt a plan for reform by April 1, 2021 to be eligible for further state funding. This web page is intended to be the location where the mayor shares the city of Rochester's progress in developing its plan in accordance with the governor's executive order 203. So they still haven't come up with um with a plan yet. No, uh, uh, she has had a letter, uh, uh, the read the governor's August 17 letter that was sent to 500 jurisdictions with police departments across New York State. Mayor Lovely A. Warren convened a working group consisting of members of the city state, of the city staff, city council, the Commission on Racial and Structural Equity, the United Christian Leadership member, uh, Ministry, and the Police Accountability Board to work as a team to guide the preparation of the city's plan for Executive Order 203. And um, I have this. I, I I have a link to this in the description box, so you can come 
and look at the minutes. Now, this is read the minutes of the January 11th, 20, 2021 meeting. So this is the meeting that they just had. Mayor, uh, Mayor's Police Reform and Reinvention Collaborative Team. Meeting notes, January 11th, 2020. Attendees, Mayor Warren, D.C., uh, Wayne Harris, Chief Harriet, uh, Shannon, Shannon Mitchell, uh, Brittany Wells, Counselor Miguel Melendez, Counselor Willie Lightfoot, Connor Reynolds, Reverend Stewart, Condonessa Brown, Doreen Kirkmeyer. One, Mayor talked about the governor's state of the state address, the governor referenced a city, a citizen review, review board similar to the panel UCLM is recommending. She asked Reverend Stewart to look at Syracuse's model. Two, a status of report, rough draft to be distributed after this meeting. Comments need to be provided by Dor to Doreen by Wednesday. Recommendations retreat February the 15th, um, 10 to 2. Wilma Hale status. The subcommittee will meet with Wilma Hale Thursday from 1 to 2. Working group report proposed schedule. PA, uh, PAB report public comment periods ends January the 15th. Meeting to review and reconcile draft recommendations submitted to date January the 14th through the 19th. So this is just a list. This is proposed and may be modified moving forward. So uh, they still haven't come up with any real, with any solid plan as far as uh, police reform and reinvention uh, for the Rochester Police Department. So this is what she was referring to when she talks about, um, I will lead the charge that these laws be changed as part of our response to the governor's executive order 203. Whatever state law she was talking about that was keeping her from being able to take any more immediate and serious action against these police uh, uh, against these police officers. So I guess all of that is supposed to be a part of uh, 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 this plan that they come up with to, to reform and reinvent the Rochester Police Department. Now, New York AG says drastic reform needed in Rochester Police Department after pepper spray used on minor. New York State Attorney General Letitia James. Now, this is the same Letitia James that set up the hotline. Uh, uh, um, I think it was at the end. It was it, it, no, it was in early 2020. This is the same Letitia James that set up the hotline now for the Asians talking about harassment and, 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 and discrimination against them and all of that. But then when the time came for her to do something uh, 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 about the police, she filed, instead of filing any real charges against anybody, she filed civil lawsuits against them. I think it was last week, week before last. Uh, New York State Attorney General Letitia James, and they keep on putting black folks in these positions now. Remember, like I said in the video earlier, that Dr. Amos Wilson talked about the difference between uh, 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 positions of power, people being in positions of power, and powerful people in positions. Somehow he put that. Like I said, I still got to find it and, 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 and add it to one of these description boxes so y'all can hear it. New York uh, State Attorney General Letitia James says she's reviewing the incident in Rochester in which an RP, uh, 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 a Rochester Police Department officer used pepper spray on a nine-year-old. She also said change is needed in the department. Are we so sick of hearing change is needed? James sent a tweet on Monday saying, What happened in Rochester on Friday is deeply disturbing and wholly unacceptable. Such use of force and pepper spray should never be deployed against a child. Period. My office is looking into what transpired, but it's clear that drastic reform is needed at Rochester, New York PD. So, um, I guess those were her comments as, as far as that's concerned is, you know, I'm looking into it. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm looking into it. 
Right, again, the police investigating the police so that the police can come back and say that the police didn't do anything wrong and that all of the police's actions were justified. So that's just what um, she has to say, which is uh, which is a bunch of nothing. Ain't nobody really saying nothing. Ain't nobody saying anything that really matters. You understand is, and that is that it's time for these police officers when they get out of hand like this and when they commit crimes against the citizens. Because when you got state sanctioned employees committing crimes against the citizens like that. I mean, that's almost that's almost like you declaring that the citizenry is 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 your enemy. And you treating the citizens the, the citizens like they are combating enemy like they're enemies from a, 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 another place. Like they some invading force or something, and, and, and that's how you treating the citizens and the people that 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 you say with that uh, pay their salaries. But that's what Letitia James had to say about it. Like I said, a whole bunch, of, a whole bunch of nothing. So uh, this is already, you know, this is already setting up just like every other incident that we have seen with these race soldiers. It's already setting up. The fix is already in. You already got the black woman telling you, unfortunately, I can't do nothing. Unfortunately, my hands are tied. Unfortunately, we're just going to have to deal with this. You got, you got another bunch of race soldiers that get to enjoy paid vacations after they assault or brutalize or murder somebody. So, I, I mean, it's all coming up to be the same bullshit. All coming up to be the same bullshit. And so far, we still haven't heard anything from the Biden administration about this. We still haven't heard anything from black women about this. We still haven't heard anything from Me Too or the feminist movement or none of them folks about what's going on with these black women. We still ain't heard nothing from our black so-called VP Kamala Harris that's supposed to be all about black women saying nothing about this. So just understand, the fix is in. Just like the fix will continue to be in. You understand what I'm saying? The fix will it, it will continue to be the same old thing over and over and over and over again, over and over and over and over again until these folks start being punished for what they're doing. One way or the other, punishment is the only thing that's going to do it. Punishment is the only thing that's going to let them know that this bullshit cannot continue. But if the only thing that they got to worry about is a paid vacation... After they brutalize or murder somebody black on the street or in their home or whatever. As long as they know all this go, the most is going to lead to is I might get fired. And then I stay off the job for six months. And then I go on a, 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 a one county over or maybe two counties over and get another job in law enforcement. Again, another democratic state. All of this stuff is happening with these black folks in Democrat-run states. Where the governor is a Democrat, the mayor is a Democrat. Where they got all these black women sitting up as mayors and, 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 and police chiefs and all of that. And nothing's being done. Because they just black puppets that have been put in place. That's all. They're not there to exercise any real power. The puppet master is pulling their strings. So I just wanted to bring y'all that update on that. And um, I talked about this too in um, the first video that we did about... Um, 
this young lady being this this little girl, because this ain't no young lady, this little girl being uh brutalized by the police, by the Royal Chester police. Uh we talked about this um uh Capitol Police Chief you 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 Gananda Pittman. So j just from that name alone, we know. We know that she's not a foundation of black Americans. But because foundation of black Americans don't name their daughters Yoga Nanda Pittman. But anyway, we talked about it and I wanted to to, to, to read a little bit of it and let you and, and, and you know and let you know uh and fill in whatever little uh uh uh, uh blanks I might have left when we talked about it in the earlier video. And this is uh, on CBSNews.com. And this was updated by Rebecca Kaplan. And it was updated January the 26th, 2020. Uh, Capitol Police Chief apologizes for failed response to January 6th riots. So now the white man that was the police chief at the time that all of this happened. You know, he resigned a couple of days. Well, they say his retirement was coming up anyway. He was set to retire. So he just went on ahead on and resigned early. Right? Because he didn't want he didn't want no attachment to it and he didn't want it to affect to affect his possible or, or possibly or, 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 or negatively affect his retirement and his pension and all of that. See if they start getting after these police officers' pensions too. Start getting after their police or uh, their pensions, it would stop some of this stuff too. It would stop some of this uh, 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 brutality and, and, and this racism in these police departments if you start getting at their pockets. That's the reason why you need to get rid of that qualified immunity so that you can start uh, suing these individual police officers. Um, acting U.S. Capitol Police Chief. Yogananda Pittman told lawmakers today there was a failure to adequately prepare for and execute a response to the assault on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th and offered sincerest apologies on behalf of her department for what unfolded that day. Not on behalf of the department, but on behalf of her de uh, 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 department. So now she, she, she's going to take on her shoulders this mess that the white man left behind. And she's going to allow them to place that on her shoulders. So that once again, a black person becomes the face of whatever went wrong, whatever happened wrong, whatever was messed up, a black person becomes the face of it. The department failed to meet its own high standards as well as yours. Pittman wrote in a statement shared by the House Appro Appropriations Committee. Let me be clear. The department should have been more prepared for this attack, her statement continued. By January the 4th, the department knew that the January 6th event would not be like any of the previous protests held in 2020. We knew that militia groups and white supremacist organizations would be attended. Well, at least she did use the word white supremacy. Most of the bootlegs won't even use that word. Most of the puppets won't. Most of the black puppets for white supremacy won't even use that word. We also knew that some of these participants were intending to bring firearms and other weapons to the event. We knew that there was a strong potential for violence and that Congress was the target. So even though she out in the police and she letting it be known, yeah, they knew what was going on. They knew what was occurring. They knew who was going to show up. They knew all about it. Even though she out in them, she still now ends up being the one that has to take the blame for it. Because she allowed them to put her in that position. Do you think for one minute that I would have let them make me the interim chief while all that was going on? No, you got to pass over me. You got to find somebody else. You understand what I'm saying? To become the face of this mess. You're not going to make me the face of this mess. And then I got to stand out and apologize to people and explain stuff. Now, 
But see, that's how they get black people. They get you by making you think that you got some kind of position of power. By making you think that you got some power because you in this position. And by giving you some little title and some little label. And, and then you willing to step into the front. And, well, you, you step into the shoes of somebody else that has left a complete mess. Despite the early warning signs, Pittman writes, the Capitol Police Board refused a request from former USCP Chief Stephen Sound to declare a state of emergency and authorize a request for National Guard support. See, she outing them now. Now, I got to give it to her. I got to give it to her. If you look at it in another direction, she's actually outing the Capitol Police and letting you know exactly what they did prior to what happened up there. So in, in, in a lot of what in a lot of ways she is saying and she is showing that they were complicit in everything that happened up there. Because they knew what was happening. They knew who was coming. They knew that these people were going to have weapons. They were going to have firearms. They knew it was going to be different. And they even denied a request from former USPC Chief Stephen Sound to declare a state of emergency and authorize a request for National Guard support. The board consists of the Sergeant at Arms of the U.S. House of Representatives, the Sergeant, the, the Sergeant at Arms and Doorkeeper of the U.S. Senate, and the Architect of the Capitol. Both the House and Senate sergeants at arms resigned in the wake of the attack, as did Sound. So she see she letting you know everybody that was a part of this by writing this letter and by making it seem like she was apologizing. She's actually outing all the people who were who were a part of this whole conspir this whole conspiracy. This thing was planned. Why would you deny that kind of request knowing the type of people that are coming to the protest, knowing it's going to be some, they're going to they gonna all be on some different type shit, knowing that they're going to be armed and that they might have other weapons other than just firearms. Why would you deny the request from this man, Stephen Sound, to declare a state of emergency and to authorize a request for the National Guard to come in with some support. And then when the National Guard did show up, they showed up unarmed. So now you got both the House and the Senate Sergeant of Arms resigned after the, 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 the attack January the 6th. Both of them Resigned. Why? Because this board that refused the request is made up of, listen again, the sergeant at arms of the U.S. House of Representatives and the sergeant of arms and doorkeeper of the U.S. Senate. Both of those sergeants of arms resigned in the wake of the attack, as did the man that made the request. Stephen Sam, why did he why did why did he uh, uh, resign? Probably because he didn't want to answer no questions. That's probably why he resigned, because he didn't want to answer no questions. Because if he stayed in that position, questions was coming his way. So he's probably told he need to go ahead on and resign too. Acting House Sergeant at Arms Timothy Blodgett. In a separate statement, did not address the Capitol Police Board's de decision to deny Sound's request. So the one that took the place of the, the, the one that resigned, uh, uh, Timothy Bludgett, he didn't address the Capitol Police Board's decision to deny this man's request to declare a state of emergency and to authorize uh, uh, the use of the National Guard. Instead, the board directed Sound to reach out to D.C. National Guard to determine how many could be sent to the Capitol on short notice. 
Their commanding general, Major General William Walker, told the Washington Post Tuesday that the Pentagon restricted his authority to deploy his troops without higher level sign-off, which caused valuable time as rioters descended on the Capitol. So see, this woman is putting it all out there. She putting it all out there. And she's doing it in the form of an apology. So yeah, you thought we might be this sister might be on to something. We gotta wait and see what 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 she what she ends up doing down the road. But right now she might be on to something. Yeah, you thought you were gonna make me the face of this. You understand what I'm saying? You thought you were gonna find a way to find somebody black to throw all of this blame on. But I'm getting ready to write this letter, and in this letter, while I'm apologizing, I'm gonna put everybody else on blast so you can know what really happened. Because that's what we finding out. We finding out here what really happened. So now this commanding general, this is a major general, William Walker, told the Washington Post Tuesday that the Pentagon restricted his authority to deploy his troops without higher level sign off which cost valuable time as rioters descended on the Capitol. So they restricted, just for this purpose, the Pentagon restricted this man's authority. In separate remarks to the committee, former Army Secretary Ryan McCarthy said that Acting Defense Secretary Chris Miller approved a request from D.C. Mayor Muriel, Bow M Mur Muriel Bowser to deploy 340 National Guard troops to assist with traffic. And at a certain metro station. But added, Miller said he would need to approve any change of uniform, interaction with protesters, or use of riot gear. McCarthy also said that the Defense Department did not receive any additional requests for aid even after asking other agencies as late as January the 4th and said federal and local agencies had given no indication that the six would be any different in size, composition, or threat levels than what we witnessed during the November 12th and November 14th demonstrations. I do not believe there was any preparations that would have allowed for an open campus in which lawful protesters could exercise their First Amendment right to free speech and at the same time prevented the attack on Capitol grounds that day. Pittman concludes. This is, this is the end of her letter. Although the USCP increased their staffing before the attacks to a total of 1,200, that's the United, that's the uh, U.S. Capitol Police, 1,200 12, officers working at the site, Pittman said they were no match for the tens of thousands of insurrectionists. Now, you, you, now you think about uh, some of the other reports where they try to make it sound like, oh, it wasn't maybe no more than 50 or 60 people or maybe 100 or, or 200 people or whatever. And, and this woman is talking about tens of thousands of folks that stormed the Capitol, some of whom were armed. Additionally, the department had to deploy officers to investigate a pipe bomb that was discovered at Republican National Committee headquarters, which required an evacuation of two house um, office buildings and the surrounding neighborhoods before discovering another vehicle with explosive chemicals and a firearm in the area and a second pipe bomb at Democratic National Committee headquarters. See, ain't nowhere in the world all of this coordinated stuff was going on. And this was not an inside job. And the Capitol Police were not a part of the inside job. And Pittman is putting all of this out here. So she giving details that we might otherwise have not ever received about what really went on up there. Had she not decided that she was going to write this letter of apology. Pittman says her officers lacked 
less lethal options like impact weapons to supplement their pepper spray and batons and had trouble communicating over radio with the noise of the ongoing attack. She additionally acknowledges that the capital lockdown procedure she ordered may not have been consistently followed. A likely reference to videos from the scene that showed some officers allowing rioters to enter the building. In the wake of the attack, Pittman told members of Congress the department has increased its intelligence sharing and implemented daily briefings for USCP officials from the department's intelligence director. Officers are receiving additional training on civil disturbance procedures. In a separate statement, Blodgett, now remember Blodgett is the, the acting um, House Sergeant of Arms. Blodgett blamed a failure of preparation, whether it was insufficient or conflicting intelligence, lacking ability to, to translate that intelligence into action, insufficient preparation, or an inadequate ability to mobilize partner agencies for immediate assistance. A series of events, once thought unfathomable, unfolded allowing our most sacred halls to be breached. Now, a lot of this is still them trying to act like the police weren't a part of this. That the police weren't working in conjunction with the rioters. But we know better. Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm reading. After the briefing, briefing Ohio Democratic uh, Congressman Tim Ryan, who chairs the House Appropriations Subcommittee overseeing pol Capitol Police, said he was terribly disappointed in the U.S. CP response to the riots. The real question is, you know, why was their intelligence not acted upon? So now we know they had it. We know they apologized, but we want to know why it wasn't acted upon. He also said he wants to bring in the former House Sergeant at Arms, Paul Irvin, and Sound, the former Capitol Police Chief, to testify before the committee about the response and ask why the Capitol Police Board denied Sound's request for a state of emergency and more National Guard support. Yeah, Sound was the, 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 the former chief. Yeah, the former chief of police. That was Sound. And see, that's the reason why he went on head on. That's the reason why he was already set to retire. That's the reason why he just went on head on and resigned. You understand what I'm saying? It's because he didn't he, he didn't want no questions. He didn't want to be he didn't want to be testifying for nothing. He he didn't want no more heat. He didn't want none of that. But by apologizing and by writing this letter of open apology, she was able to slip in a whole lot of information that we may not have otherwise gotten our hands on. So let's just hope that um, that, 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 that was her intention. You understand what I'm saying? Because, yeah, by reading a lot of this, you know, it, 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 some of it makes it sound like they're still trying to make excuses for the Capitol Police and they're still trying to justify their actions and still trying to act like, you know, they were just outnumbered and they were just unprepared and all of this kind of stuff. But she's also letting you know that they knew as far back as January the 4th what was going on and that request had been made. For certain things to happen and that the Pentagon has stepped in and restricted the general's uh, authority over his to, de to deploy his troops. All kinds of stuff was going on. So, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a setup. It was an in-house job. It was an inside job. And the Capitol Police, certain uh, uh, fractions of the Capitol Police were a part of that inside job. Hold on, y'all. I'm taking a sip. Father, 
So that's just what's going on with that. And and and, be, and, and because I had already mentioned her in the first video about um Roy, the Royal Chester Police. Because I mentioned her then, I wanted to give y'all more information of her because I didn't know how to pronounce her name correctly and all of that. So I wanted to bring y'all more information about her and about what she actually said in this uh, apology letter and all of this kind of stuff when she addressed uh, the lawmakers at the U.S. Capitol. But um, this article, will, this article will be linked in the description box as well. And you can go in and read it and you can find out more about her. But like I said, based on what I just read... Yeah, she might have been, you know, she might have been uh, apologizing or whatever, but, you know, she putting it out there. She putting certain people on front street and she letting you know certain things went down that she didn't have anything to do with. And, and you know, and, 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 you know, it's questions to be asked about why this went down this way, why this wasn't allowed to happen this way, why when you already had this information. Was this intelligence about the fact that you knew these people were going to be there? You knew that this was going to be different. You knew this protest was going to be different. You already knew that Congress was going to be a target and all of this kind of stuff. Why were not these preparations already in place? And also those, are, you know, she put it out there. So I got to give her that much. She put it out there. Now, whether she ends up uh, uh, being an out and out puppet like all the rest of them, I don't know yet. But for right now, you know, she put the she put it out there. She, you know, she put it out there in such a way where if I'm gonna take any heat, I'm not gonna take any heat by myself. So, you know, that's that's just what I wanted to bring y'all. I wanted to bring y'all the update on on the um on the on the child being prep pepper sprayed. And, and the fact that, that's, that that nothing is happening. Nothing is taking place. There's nothing for us to cheer about. There's nothing for us to feel good about. They just doing the same thing. Like I said, they keep coming out with the same playbook. They still make they still keep making the exact same plays. Ain't nothing changed. Suspension with pay, administrative leave with pay. Paid vacations. You understand what I'm saying? For brutalizing and terrorizing your black citizens. But then we already know that was what law enforcement was created for in the first place. To brutalize, terrorize, and police the black folks, the black population. And to make sure that they stayed on the plantation and did what they were supposed to do. That's what law enforcement was created for. And that's what law enforcement, after all these 400 plus years, well, 1704, uh, yeah, because, you know, uh, 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 the, 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 the slave patrol was created in South Carolina in 1704. 1704, 1804, 1904, 2004. So 316 years. They still doing the exact same thing 316, almost 17 years, almost 317 years later. They, they still doing the exact same thing. They still brutalizing, terrorizing, murdering the black population. Why? To keep them, to, 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 keep, to keep them doing what they supposed to do on the plantation. To keep the slaves in line. Ain't nothing changed. And you're talking about reforming the uh, law enforcement. You can't reform law enforcement because you can't reform uh, white supremacy. And law enforcement is the child of white supremacy. So uh, that's all I wanted to bring y'all. I just wanted to have this little conversation with you. Uh, uh, tell you what was going on. Uh, let you know what's happening as far as the little girl is concerned. Um, let you know what, uh, what old girl... Uh, uh, police, uh, U.S. Capitol Police Chief Yogan, Yogananda Pittman had to say as far as that apology and that letter and all of this and, and, and going up there to, to on the hill to talk to the lawmakers about everything that happened up there at the Capitol January the 6th. Um, so, yeah, uh, like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can find Dr. Amos where he talks about the difference between people being in positions of power and, and powerful people. I, I can't say it like he can say it. So that's the reason why I'm going to find it so that you can hear it yourself where he talks about that. Um, I'm going to try to find that and put that down in the description box. Um, 
And and y'all, if there's anything that y'all want me to talk about, if there's anything that y'all want, you know, bring, uh, uh, send me videos, send me uh, uh, topics that you want me to talk about. You know, you can leave comments in the description. I mean, in the uh, comment section, you can email me because the channel's email is in the description box. Um, so yeah. Oh, and and I also now that I thought it, and I'm glad I thought about it. But I want y'all to go to um, the Health Light channel, and I'll put. Uh, the link to the Health Light channel in the description box. Um, that's uh, she's a doctor. She's um, and, and she's acu, acu, uh, uh, acu, uh, acupuncturist. I think it's what she called. But she's a doctor, and she talks about herbs. She talks about natural medicine and all of this kind of stuff. She talks about the skin. She talks about all kinds of stuff. And, and you know, and y'all need to go and y'all need to listen to what she has to say. Um, she's been. Uh, uh, she's traveled to, to, to different countries. She traveled to Jamaica and I think she's been to Haiti. She's been to different places and I think you really, really, really need to what, to hear what she has to say about how we need to start taking better care of our bodies, how we need to get back into, uh, uh into herbs and, 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 and eating correctly and all of that. So I will have the link to her channel in the description box so that y'all can go listen to it. She talks about different plant-based foods. She talks about different vegetables and, and all kinds of stuff and, and, and how to preserve stuff, how to make stuff, how to take uh, uh, herbs and, and, and extract, what you, uh, 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 extract what you need from them. She talks about all kinds of stuff. So I will have that link in the description box because y'all need to go over there and y'all need to check her out. And again, it's Health Light. And it's H E A L T H L Y. I think it's L Y G T H. Health Light. But anyway, however it's written, it'll be linked down in the description box so that y'all can go and check her channel out. Um, But yeah, I'm trying to think is there anything else that I need to tell you that's going to be in the description box? I don't know. Just check the description box. Make sure you check the description box because these articles will be linked there. Of course, I'm gonna have. Uh, I'm gonna try to find that 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 lecture that Dr. Um, Amos Wilson did where he talks about uh, uh, that 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 dynamic as far as uh, people of power and and people in power positions of power and all of that, so that you can hear exactly what he had to say about it. And I also have her channel. The doctor's channel linked in the description box so y'all can go check her out and subscribe to her channel uh, again y'all like this video please like this video please share the video please have these conversations on social media off of social media with your family your friends your associates your co-workers and all of this y'all please let's get on cold let's stay on cold like i said the cold is not it's not some big major thing that you have to think about just because we talk about the cold it's, it's simply a code of conduct you understand what i'm saying it's simply just not saying and doing anything that will harm the group as a collective and if somebody points out to you where you are doing or saying something that may harm the group, that may harm foundational black Americans, that may harm black Americans, um, and they point out to you that you're doing something that's detrimental or harmful, you stop. You understand what I'm saying? And when, and when somebody is talking black empowerment and you know they're telling the truth, you understand what I'm saying? And they're talking about how we can empower the whole black community. You get on, you get on board with that. You know, the Bible calls it being on one accord. Well, you're thinking with the same mind. You understand what I'm saying? You have the same goals. You understand what I'm saying? Now, you may not agree all the time, 100%. You may not agree with everything that everybody says. You understand what I'm saying? But you can get with the, what they're saying because you know they're real, because you know that they, they genuinely care about the black community. And they're not just out for what they can get for themselves. So it's not hard to be on code. It's just a code of conduct. It's just being very careful about what you do and what you say. And how that's going to affect your community, your group as a whole. So we, get, we really got to work on that.
We, we really got to work on getting on code and staying on code because that's how all these other groups keep on outdoing us. That's how they are so far ahead of us and so far above us. It's because they know how to get on code and stay on code. They know how to protect their group. They know how to set aside their individual wants and needs and, and their individual little beefs and all of this kind of stuff and do what is best for the collective. We have messed around and, 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 and got all caught up in individualism. And white supremacy tells us, well, you ought to be satisfied because one or two uh, of your community, one or two black people have made it. One or two black people uh, uh, have ascended to this level or this position or whatever. So you ought to be satisfied because somebody else black. No. No. Not when down here on the grassroots in the street, folks are still suffering. Suffering economically, suffering as far as the, uh, the uh, as far as medicine and medical and Medicare and, 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 and medical care is concerned. Suffering as far as economics, suffering as far as education, suffering as far as police brutality and murder and all. No, no, it's not good enough for four or five or six or seven or even ten or twenty to have made it, and the rest down here still suffering, still oppressed. So we got to get on code and we got to stay there, okay? So, um, so you know, y'all, uh, 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 get this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, uh, please know that I appreciate every subscription. I, I appreciate every like. I appreciate every share. I appreciate every dislike. I appreciate what every comment. I appreciate whatever you do. Because you didn't have to do it. You didn't have to come here and listen to me. You didn't have to comment. You didn't have to click on the video. So know that every every little thing that you do is appreciated. Okay? So y'all get down in that description box. Pay attention to what's going on down there in that description box. And um, let's be being proactive as far as coming up with different ways that we can police our own communities. You understand what I'm saying? So we can keep these folks, these, these white supremacist race soldiers out of our communities so that they don't have access to our babies. Because y'all got to understand, there was some backstory to what happened to that little nine-year-old girl. Mom and daddy had been fighting or something like that. Uh, uh, they, the, the, the story is that mom had stabbed the dad. And all of that, and the child had seen mom and daddy both all bloody and all of this kind of stuff. So this child was going through. This child was already traumatized. Ain't no telling how much of that she's seeing. That very well may have been why she was wanting her daddy. It's because she saw mama stab daddy and she was concerned about how daddy was doing. So that very well could be why she kept calling for her dad. And they, and they say the mama was just real, real, real funny style and all of that when, when in front of the police with the little girl and all of that. And if she was calling for her daddy like that, it, it, it sounds like she has more of a preference for her father than her mother anyway. So not only is this child dealing with that trauma, now she has been traumatized by the police in this whole situation. And because you're dealing with white police officers that looked at her automatically as a full-grown adult person and never took the time to find out, okay, what's really going on with this child? Why is this nine-year-old even talking about suicide? Why are, you, why are you calling us, telling us that your nine-year-old daughter is talking about killing herself and killing you? What's really going on? So see, there was a lot of backstory there that we're not getting from mainstream media. You have to watch all the videos to see the backstory. Five, four, three, 
You understand what I'm saying? And instead of mama's ass being locked up, if she's stabbing folk, you understand what I'm saying? Or mom and daddy both being locked up, if they there fighting or whatever the case may be, this heifer gonna call the police and try to uh, 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 and, and try to push the blame and shift the shit over onto the little nine year old. See, them the kind of folks in our communities that we're going to have to weed out and we're going to have to deal with ourselves. When you got folks carrying on with that kind of foolishness in the community in front of children and allowing the children to carry the brunt of that kind of mess. We got a lot of work to do. And it starts with us each individual in our own homes and in our own uh, immediate environment. See, a lot of people wonder, well, what can I do? I'm just one person. What can I do? The first thing you can do is you can start within your own space. Start looking at you. Start looking at yourself. Start looking at your own behaviors, your own mindset, the way you think. You understand what I'm saying? The way you look at yourself, whether or not your self-respect level is up to where it should be, your self-esteem level is up to where it needs to be, whether or not your knowledge of who you are, where you come from, is where it needs to be, you start with you. Then after you get you straight, if you got any kids, you start working with your kids. And then it just starts having a ripple, a ripple effect. See, we want to run out and think and act like folks asking us to change the world and you ain't changed yourself. No, you can't touch the world until you change yourself. So for everybody that's talking about what's the solution, what should we be doing and all of that, what you should be doing is, first of all, you should be checking yourself. Making sure your mind is right. Making sure your thought, your thought pre, uh, uh, process is right. Making sure that you have the right amount of knowledge of yourself. That you have the right level of self-confidence, self-esteem, that sense of self-worth, that sense of self-respect. Because you can't respect nothing else until you respect yourself. You can't really respect yourself until you know yourself. So that's where it all starts. There's something else that the Bible said, well, I don't know, well, I, I, I'm trying to think of whether I ever actually read it like this, but my mama used to tell it to me like this, uh, that charity starts at home and spreads abroad. That's how my mama used to say it. Charity starts at home and spreads abroad. Bible also tells you that you got to clean up around your doorstep before you go over here to your neighbor's house trying to clean up at your neighbor's house. It also tells you that you got to get the beam out of your eye before you try to get that little teeny weasel stick out of somebody else's eye. All of that is simply saying you got to deal with you before you can deal with anybody else. So that's where we've all got to start. We've all got to start with us. Then after you get you straight, then you start dealing with the other folks in your household. Then after you get your household straight, then you can start trying to help the folks in your community, in your immediate community, your neighborhood, you know, your neighbors, the people that live beside you and across the street and behind you and around the corner. But it all starts with you. So ain't no point in you going, picking up a sign to get in the street talking about you marching. Ain't no point in you going to talk about you protesting nowhere. Ain't no point in you going nowhere doing none of that if you have not checked you first. If you have not gotten your personal house, your, your, your inner house in order. And then once you get your inner house in order, you get your outer house in order. And then you can move on from there. So that, that's how we do it. That's how we do it. One person, one individual at a time. And if you want any uh, uh, help 
with your history, finding out where you really come from, at, finding out what's really going on and all of that, I, I would I would highly suggest that um you check out uh, uh, Tariq's Hidden Colors, all five of them. And uh, uh, and 804, the hidden uh, history of Haiti. Um, check out Jason Black's uh, 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 7 a.m. Gentrified, uh, ethnic cleaning American style and race wars. Uh, check out Dane Calloway. You know he's talking about us being the uh, the the the, uh, Ab the Aboriginal, the native people of this land. Tariq talks about that too. Uh, 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 Tony Browder, Anthony Browder, Dr. Anthony Browder, uh, uh, Dr. James Small, Dr. Phil Valentine, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Carver Carbonet, all of them. Shahzad Ali, all of them. Get the books. Uh, 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 I think it's Ivan Van Sertima. We were already here, or we were here. Um, then you got, I, I mean, it's so many. You know what I'm saying? Dr. Neely Fuller's book, The On Cold Book, uh, 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 Dr. Frans Francis Crest Wilson's, her ISIS papers. It's just, it's so many. Dr. Uh, Renuko Rashid. Uh, it's just so many. You know, we're going to compile a book list. You understand what I'm saying? And put together a book list so people can know what books to go read. But you, you, but you got to get up on history. And, I, and I'm learning more and more every day. You got to get up on history. I mean, Tariq gives a, 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 a free history lesson just about every time he come on. Just about every time he come on YouTube, he giving a free history lesson. So let me hear up and get off of here. I did not mean to stay on here this long. Um, but yes, it starts with each one of us individually first and then and then we go from there we take it from there but we got to get us right before we can get you know you got to get you right before you can work with anybody else so you know let's stay let's get on cold and let's stay on cold all right uh, y'all have a good morning and i'll talk to y'all soon